Let's turn to Hong Kong, where legislators are preparing to pass a controversial security law that has been criticized for its effect on human rights. The law has long been demanded by China's central government in Beijing, which has increasingly asserted its authority on the island of Hong Kong in recent years. Massive street protests in earlier years stopped the government from implementing the law known as Article 23 for provision in Hong Kong's constitution. But with many opposition activists in jail or in exile, it's expected to pass through parliament easily. Let's take a look at exactly what Article 23 entails. The new law would be part of Hong Kong's mini constitution, which is separate from that of the Chinese mainland. Article 23 requires Hong Kong to suppress dissent and threats to the government. The new law contains broad provisions against treason, insurrection, espionage, and destructive activities endangering national security and external interference. Human rights advocates say it dramatically undermines due process and fair trial rights. The moment that changed everything. July 1st, 1997, when Britain handed over Hong Kong to China, which promised to respect a principle of one country, two systems. That meant that Hong Kongers could enjoy many of the democratic freedoms they'd had under British rule, under Hong Kong's own mini-constitution. But in 2003, Beijing tried to introduce security laws under Article 23 of that mini-constitution. Hundreds of thousands of people took to the streets in protest, and the proposal was withdrawn. In 2014, a civil disobedience movement arose pushing for more democratic government. Organizers feared that the police might crack down. Everyone has to stay highly alert. The rally has been peaceful, but now tear gas and plastic bullets have been transferred to the government headquarters. Soon after, the police forcefully cleared protest camps, and the government did not relent, setting the stage for future clashes with democracy activists. Five years later, another series of widespread protests, sparked by a proposal to extradite criminal suspects to mainland China, was met with a harsh police response. No one is afraid. We are more and more angry. You never know what the government will put up next and I'm just worried about what Hong Kong will become. Rather than answering the protesters' demands, the following year Beijing imposed a new national security law that defined many anti-government efforts as secession and subversion, and assigned life sentences for many of those so-called crimes. That was it for many of Hong Kong's pro-democracy activists. Dozens of opposition leaders were arrested, along with journalists and ordinary citizens. Others went into exile. Independent media was silenced. Beijing signaled that it had fully taken over in 2022, when Xi Jinping arrived in Hong Kong to swear in John Lee as the territory's chief executive. The ceremony happened on July 1st, 25 years to the day after the British handover. Li has said that the new security legislation is a priority, and with the opposition vanquished, he's likely to get his wish. I'd like to bring in Sunny Chung, a pro-democracy activist who has left Hong Kong to seek asylum in the United States. He joins me now from Washington, D.C. Thank you so much for taking the time. I understand that one of the concerns over the new security law is that some of the crimes, uh, particularly in relation to state secrets, are vague. Uh, are you worried about how these might be enforced? Yes, I personally um I'm very worried about the definition of the legis proposed legislation and how the way it will be enforced. Because the legislation proposed adopting broad and vague definition of national security from China's legal framework, creating challenges for Hong Kong common law system and raising a lot of concern about the erosion of legal certainty and judicial independence. Proposed uh, offenses like um, espionage and state secret, as mentioned, are ambiguously defined, increasing a lot of risks for foreign businesses and intensifying control over information with implication for due diligence and freedom of expression. Now, in addition to concerns for businesses operating there, are there already indications of, of how this law might be applied? Something like the law, the law about espionage, what that could mean? Uh, for example, for activists in Hong Kong? 
Right. So under the current proposal, espionage um, includes also like obtaining, collecting um, information to uh, uh, for for any people that are useful uh, um, um, to an external force, and that is very alarming because um, one challenge to foreign investors is that they often conduct this kind of like um, due diligence for their operation in Hong Kong. So whenever if the regime uh, consider that um, you are obtaining information. Um, that can be useful for external force and also might reveal some social situation and economic situation in China and in Hong Kong, and you can actually be persecuted. And in recent cases and months, we see that actually Chinese government has weighed many foreign uh, businesses offices. That creates a lot of uncertainty and concern among business sector. And so compared to, to when you left uh, Hong Kong a few years back, you know, what, what, is the, what is the atmosphere like there today under, under the possibility of this taking effect? I believe um, the once thriving civil society in Hong Kong was already long gone um, due to the crackdown and um, the, the Article 23 and the previous um, national safety law. Um, as mentioned in the video, actually a lot of uh, um, social, uh, um, uh, uh, social, social groups like uh, medias are also being dismantled um, due to the crackdown. And only a handful of protests can be organized in Hong Kong under severe scrutiny of the Hong Kong police force. So this, um, the freedom of expression and the freedom of assembly are not actually protected in Hong Kong right now. And that actually brings a lot of uh, more concern to how the Hong Kong government can implement this law uh, without check and balances. Hmm. So, so you say there's been only a handful of protests. Is that, is that because you think there is less opposition uh, to, to this law in Hong Kong uh, because it has been more muted than what we have seen in years previously, or is this a sign of the times? Certainly. Uh, many friends of mine are now actually in prison behind the bar, and personally, I'm now also in exile. So the, uh, the whole opposition in Hong Kong are uh, really being wiped out, and also uh, they are either in prison or in exile. So I would say when the opposition uh, is not in place in Hong Kong, uh, we cannot expect the Hong Kong government will hold themselves accountable when it comes to um, implementing this kind of uh, national safety law, especially against the backdrop of um, Chinese, how Chinese government is understanding national security. Now, if you're speaking to an international audience here, so uh, just before I let you go, I'd like to ask, uh, what do you think uh, Western democracies and, and Asian democracies like Japan and South Korea uh, can do here? Do they have any sway? I mean, um, I think there are like two layers of things, right? Uh, first of all, of course, I mean, try to um, hold the Chinese government and Hong Kong government accountable for their uh, violation of the one country, two system and arresting so many uh, po uh, political prisoners, right? And on the other hand, I would say um, Asian democracy like Japan, South Korea, or even Southeast Asian countries, you have to consider, actually, um, you have to deal with, with China, given uh, um, the very... Uh, uh, unstable economic situation and how Chinese government is increasingly adopting a problematic national security uh, uh, understanding uh, 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 domestically. So I think this is a very uh, strong signal for them to try to diversify their supply chain and business environment in order to minimize the risks with um, doing businesses with China. Democracy activist Sunny Chung, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Thank you.